Hey guys, this is the biggest Fusion 360 update I've ever seen. There's enhancements in every workspace. Let's check it out. And a couple new workspaces. Hey everyone, Aaron here. In this What's New update, I get to bring you some incredible news out of the generative design front. So let's do it. First of all, this. Generative design is no longer contained in some foreign interface. It's now been given its own workspace. This is where you can perform all your generative design workflows. We'll start with the model setup. Here, you'll use a similar workflow as the Simplify workspace in simulation. This enables you to explore endless preserve, obstacle, and starting shapes to achieve new and exciting generative design results. I'll split out some preserve regions from the original design, and you can see I made some simple cylindrical bodies to be used as obstacles. Then, you can set up the performance requirements and constraints. These loading conditions will be what generative design uses to determine whether or not you've met your objectives. Objectives can be set to either minimize the mass or maximize stiffness. Then it's off to the manufacturing definition, where the updates don't stop. Now in addition to additive and unrestrained, you'll see new abilities to use milling constraints in the generation of results. These will ensure the outputs are ready for those subtractive manufacturing approaches. In each study, you can use up to four different definitions. And for the three axis approaches, you can choose up to six setup orientations. After adding up to 10 different materials, we'll do a quick check to ensure everything is ready. This study checks out, so we'll fire it off to the cloud. With it offloaded to the cloud, we can jump back to the edit model dialog and clone the setup and study, so we can try some different things. In the next example, I might want to try using a starting shape, denoted in yellow, to influence the results. When we're done with that quick setup, we'll send that to the cloud to solve as well. While those are running, let's not forget the best part of having this integrated in a workspace. I've been running all of this from my Mac. And now that there's only one Fusion, all commercial subscribers will now have access to these capabilities. When it's time to explore results, you'll do it in a similar manner as before, with thumbnails, properties, scatter plots, and tables. We can apply filters to narrow results, including a new option to filter by manufacturing method. And, while comparing results, we can now visualize the design space, which will illustrate preserves, obstacles, and starting shapes to understand details behind the setup. When a solution is selected, we can now create a new design from the outcome. No more downloading, uploading, and converting. Just hit the button, and the generative design is opened in a new tab. And if you were blown away to get B reps out of those results, the next bit, which is definitely new, will leave you flabbergasted. This file has history. Within that history are a series of steps. Starting from the end, you can find a combine, a boundary fill, and what I'm looking for here, an editable T-spline body. When editing this, you'll find new tools designed specifically for working with these generative results. Maybe you want to move a strut. In the past, you would have had to, somewhat painstakingly, selected the faces of the T-spline that made that up. Not the case anymore. Use the new Whole Strut Selection tool, also accessible using the keyboard shortcut of Control H. With the faces selected, we can start to make a quick change, but wouldn't it be nice to have this triad realign to the entity? Especially if it were to align axially to the strut. No sweat, just hit this button or Control V to use a new alignment option. In the last step, you might have been wondering why the feature selection tool was called Whole Strut, and here's the answer. There's also a new Erase and Fill tool. This does an incredible job of taking holes like this, and just like the name implies, fills them in. The one thing to keep in mind here is that keyboard shortcut I mentioned earlier. Control H will avoid you having to enter that dialog to make that quick selection. As I wrap up, I want to make a quick side note that these T-spine bodies are actually only partially editable. That's because the interfaces are intelligently frozen to avoid disconnecting bodies as you make changes to the outputs. Hope you're thrilled to use the new generative design workspace and edit capabilities in T-Splines. I can't wait to use subtractive constraints in generative design to make some really awesome new parts. I know, that T-Spline editing when you export an outcome out, that's freaking awesome. It's incredible, the ability to select the struts and start moving them around, I just love that. Well, let's see what else we can do in modeling now. All right, let's start off with our first enhancement in the design workspace. First, let's focus in on this guide component for this valve assembly. Previously, we had two different types of fillet commands, but to simplify things, we combine them into one command. Let's turn on the fillet command. 
Let's start by selecting this first edge and making the radius 1.5. Now with the new fillet command, I can fillet multiple selections at different radii. Let's add another group by clicking on the plus sign. This next selection, we can select this new edge and this face and make them a different radius. We can control the size of the radius and the continuity per group independently. This will speed up the process of adding different types of fillets to your design without having to repeat the fillet command. But wait, there's one more thing. We have also added the rule fillet to this fillet tool. The rule fillet does what it says. It makes fillets based on a rule. We can select faces or features as the input for the rule fillet. No matter if the number of edges or features changes, Fusion 360 will always fillet all the edges in the selected feature or face. As you can see, we changed the pattern in this example and we didn't get an error because of the fillet was missing edges. If I were to increase the number of holes, the new holes would also be filleted. All right, this next update is one of the biggest updates that will change the way you structure and design in Fusion 360. This tool is called Derive. You can derive sketches, bodies, components, sub-assemblies, top-level assemblies, construction geometry, sheet metal flat patterns, and even parameters. Wow, that was a long list, but you can select any combination of that list to make some really unique workflows. Now let's show you how it works. There are two ways to derive in Fusion 360. Option one, you can create or push an object from the current Fusion 360 design into a brand new design, or you can add the selection to an existing design. Once the assets are derived, you can continue to work on the design, add features, make changes, and those changes will not propagate back to the original assembly. Option two, you can insert or pull an object from an existing design into the active Fusion 360 design. Either workflow produces a feature in the timeline that can be edited. Once you edit the derived feature, it will reopen the associated Fusion 360 design, and you can change your selection, as in this case, we can select an extra component. Just in case you don't want this to be linked anymore, you can break the link by right-clicking the derived feature in the timeline. Notice derived assets in the browser have a derived arrow icon next to them, showing the reference. This next part is important, so pay attention. You might notice that this derived feature is similar to inserting a part into this Fusion 360 design as an external reference, but it takes it to the next level. You may have noticed Derive gives you the ability to select individual pieces out of the Fusion 360 design without having to bring in everything. But more importantly, Derive lets you edit the derived assets in time. Let's take this derived wheel component as an example. In this new assembly, I can thicken the outer and inner ring, which will only be visible in this Fusion 360 design. Now let's switch back over to the original stop valve. Let's edit this design and increase the number of spokes of the wheel component to five. Now we could save the design, and when we switch back over to the other assembly, you will notice that it is flagged as out of date. We can update this valve design, and it will reflect the changes from the derived wheel. This new derived feature will be essential when you have components that are commonly reused in other designs but have slight variations that need to be made. Now let's check out some other workflows perfect for the new derived tool. In this next example, I've already laid out two flattened sheet metal components, which we will be cutting on our water jet. We want to add some other sheet metal components from another design to this job to be cut. In this case, we can use the insert derive workflow. Let's browse through my Fusion 360 designs to a sheet metal enclosure we want to start to manufacture. This will open up the design for us to select what we want to derive into my previous design. In this case, I will select both flat patterns from the sheet metal enclosures. Once I hit OK, these components will now be derived into my layout. Let's move these components around to better lay them out to be cut. We can even make copies of the design to maximize the amount of components we get done in this job. Don't worry, the copies will retain the link back to the original design as well. Now let's switch over to the manufacturer environment to start to program this job. After selecting a tool, I can select one face of these component and tell Fusion to select the same plane faces to grab all the edges for all the components with one click. Now that is a slick click. Of course, we can simulate this to ensure the parts are to be cut on the water jet correctly. But here's the magic behind Derive in this example. 
I was able to bring multiple sheet metal flat patterns from different Fusion 360 designs associatively. So when myself or a team member makes a design change to the original design, this derived layout will update associatively. Then we can simply hop back into the manufacturer workspace and regenerate the toolpaths to account for the change in the geometry with a click of a button. The new derive feature makes it so much easier to lay out sheet metal flat patterns to be cut on the water jet, laser cutter, or plasma cutter. Those are some great applications of the derive tool, Bryce. My favorite has to be deriving a design for manufacturing. This keeps the associativity to the assembly, but allows me to add work holding models and program CAM toolpaths without managing all the other assembly components. When the assembly changes, the part updates in place and I can just regenerate the toolpaths in the derived design. Let's take a look at some of the CAM updates by switching to the Manufacturer Workspace. That's right, the CAM Workspace will appear as the Manufacturer Workspace because we have two new previews, and the Additive Preview extends Fusion 360's capabilities beyond just subtractive machining. We'll dive into that preview in a minute, but for now, let's take a look at the Machine Configurations Preview. When creating a setup, the first step is selecting a machine configuration. I can choose from a preloaded list of generic machines and then edit to insert my machine's capabilities. Machine configurations define the properties of the machine, like the work envelope, kinematics, maximum spindle speed, and default post-processor. Fusion 360 will reference these later when creating and posting toolpaths, so you have greater confidence that your toolpaths will run on your machine the first time. Remember, this is a tech preview, so we'll be constantly improving it until it is fully released into Fusion 360. Our first turning improvement is the option to define the safe Z from the stock front or back, making it easier for those of you who set the work coordinate system on the back of the stock to keep the tool safely away from the chuck. For those of you using multiple tool turrets, there's a new column in the tool library to display the tool turret. Right click on the column titles and check turret to enable the column. This is also a good reminder that you can reorganize the tool library columns by clicking and dragging. The face and single groove operations now have an offset to allow the tool to go below the inner radius selection, giving you more control over the depth of cut when available selections might not match your intent. There is a new option in the linking tab for all turning operations to override the safe Z setting defined in the setup for more control at the operations level there's also an explicit approach and retract setting so you can really dial in those linking moves. The chamfer operation now has multiple step downs for wide chamfers where one pass might be too heavy of a cut. The part operation now has an edge break option to chamfer or fillet the back edge automatically. This works on sharp edges or modeled chamfers or fillets so you don't have to edit the model to get the parting operation you want. Let's switch gears to the Additive Manufacturing Preview. This back frame was generatively designed with the Additive Manufacturing Constraint, so I'll derive it out for some additive work. Select the Additive Machine Configuration, position your part on the build plate, and generate supports. Then preview the material deposition for Metal Additive Manufacturing. Of course, the real value of additive coming to Fusion 360 is its presence in the same space as the subtractive capabilities so you can manage the full additive and subtractive workflow in one place. Additive is a preview, so you should expect many improvements before it fully joins Fusion 360. Last but certainly not least, there are now over 14,000 Harvey and Helical tools available to download and use immediately from the online tool library at cam.autodesk.com slash hsmtools. Import them into the Fusion 360 tool library and you're ready to go. That new additive capability in the manufacturing workspace is so cool. It really ties together the whole design process. Uh, AU's right around the corner, keep your eyes peeled. And we're doing this new thing called 360 Live on YouTube Live Sessions. We're covering every topic in all of Fusion 360. Make sure to check it out. That's all we got this time. See you later.